Topical fluorides. As you all know, a dental caries has emerged as an epidemic disease worldwide. So, in a limited array of the agents which can reduce the incidence of dental caries, fluoride has been proved to be a very effective one. Dr. Dean in the yesterday years proved that the high incidence of dental caries can be prevented by the use of fluorides. He carried out various experiments in different countries and different localities and found that the incidence of dental caries was less in the areas where the fluoride concentration of water was more rather than in those areas where the chloride concentration was very less. Then he also conducted a few experiments on extracted teeth. When the extracted teeth were exposed to fluoride solutions, they showed lesser incidence of dissolution by external acids and they were more resistant. He also inferred that the individuals who migrated from non-fluoridated areas to fluoridated areas showed a lesser incidence of dental caries. So he recognized an element which was fluoride in reduction of the incidence of dental caries in those individuals. So fluorides can be available in different type of delivery systems. So fluoride can be available in different type of delivery systems which makes the fluoride element available for the tooth surface for a local chemical reaction. In 1941 began an era of topical fluorides when the first study on topical fluorides was conducted by Bibi and he had put forward an element or a compound which was called sodium fluoride and he conducted various studies on that compound and found that it helped in reduction in the incidence of dental caries in a group of individuals. Further, other studies were conducted by compounds like calcium fluoride, APF, aluminium fluoride and so aluminium I mean fluoride, which also reduced the incidence of dental caries. So fluoride delivery methods can be divided into either a topical delivery method or a systemic delivery method. Now the topical fluorides can further be divided into a professionally applied system of fluorides and a self-applied system. The professionally applied system they further comprise of neutral sodium fluoride, APF gel, the amine fluoride, the stannous fluoride, the fluoride gels and the fluoride varnishes which I will be explaining further. The systemic fluoride system comprises of water fluoridation, the milk fluoridation, flues of fluoride tablets, fluoride drops and salt fluoridation also. So coming over to the professionally applied systems of fluoride as I have already described they comprise of the solutions. The solutions can further be derived into sodium fluoride which is 2%, stannous fluoride which is 8%, by concentration and acidulated phosphate fluoride or APF gel or APF solution which is 1.23 by percentage. The gels comprise of APF gel or acidulated phosphate fluoride gel which is 1.23% by the concentration. Even fluoride varnishes are available. They can be further divided into a floor protector and a dewfoot type of varnish. The self-applied fluoride means the fluoridated systems 
which can be applied and used by the patients at home. They can be further divided into the dentrifices or the fluoridated dentrifices, the mouth rinses, toothpicks, the floss, chewing gums and tablets. Now let us know what is the method of application of these professional fluorides. The professional fluorides can either be applied by a paint on technique or a tray technique. Now what do we do in a paint on technique? In this technique we generally paint the teeth or the individual arches of a patient by a fluoride solution. Generally mandibular arch is preferred for the same and after all painting the mandibular arch, the individual teeth and the individual teeth surfaces we go for another arch that is the maxillary arch. We should make sure that proper suction is there available while painting the arches so that the patient does not swallow the fluoride solution because it may lead to fluoride toxicity too. Then the second technique is a tray technique. This is generally used when the solution of fluoride is available in the form of gels. We generally fill up the tray up to one third of its depth and we apply these trays on the patient's mouth. Both maxillary and mandibular arch the trays are applied, the suction is maintained and if there will be excess of solution, the patient is asked to expectorate. Further, the trays can also be compressed so that the gel solution can diffuse into the proximal spaces and all the surfaces of the tooth are covered easily. It is found that gel technique is more superior to the paint on technique which was conducted by various studies carried out by various scientists. Next, let us know what are the major indications or in what type of patients fluoride application is necessary or it should be done. In the patients who are having a high caries activity or a high caries index that is more than one to two lesions appear in the patient's mouth per year. In the case of rampant caries or the patient is maintaining a poor oral hygiene. Fluoride is highly indicated soon after the tooth erupts in the oral cavity because at that time the enamel surface of the tooth is more susceptible for the intake of fluoride element from the fluoride paste, the gel or the solution which is applied to the tooth surface. In the cases of xerostomia or reduced salivary flow where the patient is suffering from dry mouth in such conditions also the caries incidence in the patient's mouth will be high. So in such cases if we apply fluoride this will help in reduction in the lesions of the caries in the patient's mouth. If the patient is undergoing any radiotherapy, he is more prone of having xerostomia or increased number of caries lesion in the mouth. In such cases, we can opt for fluoride application also. Even before cementation of a stainless steel crowns, because they may help in hampering the oral hygiene of a person. They may further cause the secondary caries in the mouth of a person. So fluoride application is helpful in such cases. In the case of eating disorders, if the person is taking sweets too frequently or anorexia voluminosa or nervosa in such conditions, the fluoride application is helpful. In the case of disabled patients or handicapped patients who are not able to maintain their oral hygiene properly or carry out the mechanical cleansing procedures in a proper way due to lack of manual dexterity and mental understanding and psychological development. In such cases, fluoride application can help in 
maintaining their oral hygiene. It is a part of preventive dentistry. Now, let us go to the individual professionally applied fluorides, which I have already enumerated as sodium fluoride, APF gel, silicon fluoride and so on. So, we will go on to the individual descriptions of these. First, we will commence with sodium fluoride. Now, what is sodium fluoride? It is a solution or a fluoridated solution which is applied to the mouth of the patient. This is a neutral solution basically, has a pH of 7 and 9500 parts per million of fluoride. It is very effective in reduction of the dental caries. Sodium fluoride is the first one in the milestones of professionally applied fluoride. Various studies were conducted by Bibby and Natson in the year 1942 on this particular compound and its efficacy in reduction of the caries incidence. The frequency of application of sodium fluoride is four times per year at the particular ages of 3, 7, 11 and 13 years which can be related to the eruption status or eruption of particular teeth in the oral cavity. So, the delivery or the effectivity of sodium fluoride application at this particular time will be more or up to the maximum so that we can reap the maximum benefit from the application of sodium fluoride. So, by the virtue of its neutral pH and 9200 parts per million of fluoride in the molecule, the caries incidence by application of sodium fluoride has reported to get reduced by 45%. So, let us know that how do we prepare this solution of sodium fluoride so it can be applied to the mouth of the patients. The technique is called Natsen's technique. Here we can prepare 2% by concentration of sodium fluoride with a pH of 7 that is the neutral pH. First of all, we will prepare the mouth of the patient by oral prophylaxis and polishing. After that, proper isolation by the means of cotton rolls is done. Generally, the salivary duct openings are blocked so that there is no dilution of the solution by the saliva of the patient. Then, after proper isolation, we progress for the preparation. The 2% solution of sodium fluoride is applied to the dry tooth surfaces. We should make it a point the tooth surface should be exactly dry. The solution is applied by the means of a cotton tip applicator. Now, after application of the particular solution on individual teeth, we wait for 4 minutes, exactly 4 minutes till the solution gets dried on the teeth. Then, after the time period of 4 minutes is completed, we repeat the procedure for the remaining quadrants. Next, the patient is advised not to eat or drink anything till 30 minutes of time. Now, why this is instructive? Particularly to allow the availability of sodium fluoride for a prolonged period of time. So, as I have already told, the application is done and the second, third and fourth applications are done in weekly intervals. That is, the time period between the application should be a week. The application is done particularly on the ages of 3, 7, 11 and 13 years. Now, uh, let us see that how does the sodium fluoride acts, that is what is the chemical composition and the chemical reactions behind it. Basically, we see 
that calcium fluoride is formed after the reaction of sodium fluoride with the enamel. The calcium fluoride further reacts with the enamel or the hydroxyapatite of enamel to form fluoroapatite. But as the calcium fluoride is formed, as the sodium fluoride is applied, the calcium fluoride will be present in excess. Now this excess presence of calcium fluoride will cause further reduction in the intake of sodium fluoride by the enamel. This is known as the choking effect. That the calcium fluoride will prevent the diffusion of sodium fluoride into the enamel. That is why the teeth are kept wet for 4 minutes and further application is done only after the 4 minutes of time or when the solution is completely dry. So the sodium fluoride reacts with the fluoride of the enamel with the hydroxyapatite of the enamel to form calcium fluoride which is a resistant compound which will further react with the hydroxyl ions or the hydroxyapatite of enamel to form fluoroapatite. Fluoroapatite is a very resistant one which re prevents further reaction of the acids or also interferes with the bacterial enzymes for the production of acids which will help in reduction of the caries incidence. It also interferes with the metabolism of plaque for production of acids. So it has an anti-enzymatic action. Furthermore, it also helps in the remineralization of the already demineralized areas. So sodium fluorides can also be applied in the case of incipient caries lesion. So the role of sodium fluoride in the reduction of caries incidence is a manifold. Now the solution of sodium fluoride can be prepared by addition of 20 gram of sodium fluoride to 1 liter of distilled water. This will cause the formation of a sodium fluoride solution but the storage of this sodium fluoride solution should always done in plastic bottles because the sodium fluoride will react with the silica of the glass to produce silica fluoride which is an inactive compound which is of no use at all. So we always store sodium fluoride in plastic containers or plastic bottles. There are various disadvantages and advantages of the material. Sodium fluoride has a neutral pH so it is easily acceptable by the patients on whom it is applied. The taste is palatable, it is not irritable to the gingiva or other oral tissues. It will not cause any burning or discoloration of the tissues or the teeth. Moreover, it is a very inexpensive material and is easily available. It is also a stable compound. That is, it does not disintegrate, it has a good shelf life. Moreover, the disadvantages of the same are that it requires a number of visits. So, patient cooperation is very necessary for maintaining the follow-up visits. Because if the patient migrates from one place to other, how will we cope up with the further visits? So, patient cooperation is very necessary due to multiple visits and there is a long duration of procedure. The caries reduction is not as much as the application of other fluoridated compounds. That is, it is only 20 to 25 percent of caries reduction has been reported by the application of sodium fluoride. Now, coming over to Another compound that is stannous fluoride. Stannous fluoride plays a central role in the saga of preventive dentistry. Many other compounds were also tested like sodium fluoride. But 
they were not as effective. Whereas stannous fluoride was found to be fourfold times more effective than that of sodium fluoride and other compounds. So this compound was discovered by Muller in the year 1957 and he reported the incidence of dental caries by application of the same reduced by 57 to 60 percent. Now how did he prepare the solution of stannous fluoride? It was found that 8 percent of concentration of stannous fluoride is more efficacious and it contains 19,360 parts per million of fluoride with a pH of 2.1 to 2.3 that is it is has been an acidic pH as compared to the neutral sodium fluoride but the solution of stannous fluoride should be freshly prepared at the time of application as it has no shelf life at all so to prepare 8% of stannous fluoride 0.8 grams of stannous fluoride powder is diluted in 10 ml of distilled water and is always kept or stored in a plastic container before the application. It should always be shaken before use and be freshly prepared every time. Now why this is so? This is because stannous fluoride further if it is kept reduces to stannic fluoride which is an inactive compound. Now let us see how we apply the stannous fluoride or freshly prepared solution of stannous fluoride in mouth of a patient. The stannous fluoride are present in O-shaped capsules. Immediately before the application the O-shaped capsules are twisted open into distilled water. They are mixed and applied to the mouth of the patient. But before this, proper oral prophylaxis of the teeth, then followed by isolation is done in the patient. The stannous fluoride solution is applied by a dry cotton tip to an absolutely dry tooth. So, it should be ensured that proper suction and isolation is there present. So, the solution is continuously applied by the means of a cotton tip applicator for every 15 to 30 seconds. And the procedure is repeated for the other quadrants or the remaining surfaces of the teeth. Lastly, the patient is advised not to eat or drink anything till 30 minutes of time for application or the more availability of the stannous fluoride solution in the mouth of the patient. Otherwise, the solution will be washed off. Now, why does this continuous application is done in the mouth of the patient? We will see later. The advantages of stannous fluoride are that it is present, the shelf life can be very less but the advantages are that between 6 to 12 months its effectivity is there. The caries reduction is by 25 to 35 percent. It is an unstable compound with a metallic taste. It can also call gingival irritation and brownish pigmentation of the teeth due to the element stannous. The staining of the margins of restorations are also found by the application of stannous fluoride. The pH of stannous fluoride is 2.1 to 2.3 which is a very acidic pH which can cause the irritation of the gingiva of the patient. Now, uh, the annual application or the semi-annual application is a beneficial over the sodium fluoride solution because sodium fluoride has to be applied by four times 
for a weekly interval. So follow up will be difficult in the cases of sodium fluoride application. But this does not hold true for stannous fluoride because its application is only annual or biannual means one to two times a year. But since the solution has to be freshly prepared every time, it is a bit cumbersome procedure. It cannot be stored at all. It has zero shelf life. Now let us see what is the mechanism of action or the reactions which are underlying the procedure of application of stannous fluoride and how does it cause the anticarious activity. The stannous fluoride, it reacts with a hydroxy appetite. Then further it forms calcium fluoride and stannous trifluorophosphate. The stannous trifluorophosphate is a resistant compound. It rapidly penetrates within 30 seconds and makes the enamel more permeable or acceptable for the fluoride element. So since because of its rapid penetration, stannous fluoride has to be applied and reapplied every 30 to 35 seconds. The other products which are formed by the result of the reaction are stannous hydroxy phosphate, calcium fluoride and calcium trifluorostannate which are also efficacious in prevention of caries. Now coming over to the acidulated phosphate fluoride or APF. The APF was discovered by Buchewald in the year 1960. He developed APF formula in the era of preventive fluorides. The APF is available in two forms that is APF solution and APF gel. The preparation of APF can be applied semi-annually to the patient for a four minutes of time duration and it is reported to reduce the caries incidence by 28%. Now, what is the difference between the solution and the gel? For preparing a solution, 20 grams of sodium fluoride is added to 1 liter of 0.1 molal phosphoric acid. Further to the solution, we add 50% of hydrofluoric acid which is added to adjust the pH at 3. So we can see the ABF solution is quite acidic than both the sodium fluoride and the stannous fluoride. And the concentration of 1.23% is reached finally after the addition of hydrofluoric acid. The gel is very flowable material. It cannot be retained on the teeth for a long duration of time. So the gel was discovered. That is, the solution is a very flowable material which cannot be retained on the teeth for the long duration of time. So to combat for this disadvantage, APF gel was formulated. Now how this APF gel is prepared? To the solution, we add methoxy cellulose, methyl cellulose or hydroxy ethyl cellulose to form it in the gelling concentration. And the pH of the solution is adjusted between 4 to 5. So the gel is less acidic than the solution. So it has some superior advantages over the APF solution. Now, what is the technique of application of this gel and solution? It is known as the Boudoir technique which was developed in 1963. The 1.23% of APF contains 12,300 parts per million of fluoride with a pH of 3. So this procedure is the same as before 
after proper pro prophylaxis, the 1.23% of solution is applied to a dry tooth surface to make sure that there is no contamination by saliva. The solution is applied continuously by a cotton tip applicator. And furthermore, as in the case of sodium fluoride, the tooth is kept moist for a period of at least 4 minutes. Continuously, the tooth is lubricated and is kept moist. Even the floss can be passed through the interproximal surfaces for the availability of the solution in the same surfaces. So the entire surfaces of the tooth are wetted by the following procedure and the procedure is repeated for the other quadrants and other surfaces of the teeth. Similarly, as before, we advise the patient not to eat or drink anything till 30 minutes of time. This was the mechanism of application of the solution. Now, how is the gel applied to the teeth surfaces? We have certain foam line trays which are available in the market, both the maxillary and the mandibular trays. Even Customized trays can be prepared for the patient. Now these full foam line trays are loaded to the one third of its depth by the means of APF gel. And the gel, the trays are placed in the mouth of the patient. The maxillary and the mandibular trays can either be placed individually or simultaneously. Then it is ensured that the suction is proper and if there is excess of gel in the mouth of the patient, the patient can expect to rate so that it does not swallow the excess of the gel. Now it is ensured that all the teeth surfaces are covered by gel. To do so, we compress the trays so that the gel can pass through the interproximal spaces and all the surfaces are properly covered. After this, four minutes, the tray is kept in the mouth and furthermore, the tray is removed. Now, what is the mechanism of action or what are the individual elements which are responsible for the action of this particular agent? So after the APF is applied or the solution or the gel form, it causes dehydration of the tooth surface that is the water content of the tooth surface or the enamel is lost. This dehydration will lead the enamel to be porous and there will be shrinkage of the molecules of enamel. This will cause further diffusion of the gel or the solution into the enamel. The compound which is formed intermediately is dicalcium phosphate dihydrate on hydrolysis that is attachment of the hydroxyl ions which is a highly reactive compound with fluoride. The fluoride further forms fluoroapatite and fluoroapatite is a very resistant compound for the diffusion of any acids. It makes the tooth hard and resistant to decay. So, after the continuous supply of APF gel should be maintained for 30 seconds and the tooth is kept wet for about 4 minutes. The intermediate compound is formed and this is dicalcium phosphate dihydrate which will further form fluoroapatite which is resistant to tooth decay. So the number of applications is either semi-annual or biannual, either once or twice a year. It has certain advantages over the other materials is that it is quite cheap, easily available. It is a stable compound that is before or even after or before any application, it does not need to be freshly prepared. It has a good shelf life and can be stored. It can also be available in various flavoring agents 
like if the children like a strawberry flavor or a peppermint flavor, such type of gels are available in particular flavors. 30 to 40 percent of the caries reduction has been found by the reduction or application of the gel or the solution form. But the disadvantage of the same is that the tooth has to be kept wet for 4 minutes of time. Even the solution of APF is acidic, sour and bitter in taste. It can also cause tissue damage. So after completion of these professionally applied fluorides, we can move to the fluoride varnish. Fluoride varnish was advocated by Schmidt in the year 1964. The two most commonly used fluoride varnishes are Durfurt and Fluor Protector. The Durfurt is a compound of sodium fluoride varnish and Fluor Protector is a silane fluoride. Now the mechanism of application are same for both. The oral prophylaxis followed by isolation. The teeth is dry to prevent salivary contamination and a drop of varnish is placed on a brush type of applicator and is painted thin on the teeth surfaces. The first application is done on the mandibular arch and then we proceed for the maxillary arch. Then the patient is asked to sit with his mouth open till 4 minutes of time till the varnish dry. Care should be taken that generally cotton rolls are not applied for isolation because the varnish may stick to the cotton rolls and cause further contamination by the means of cotton strands. Then the patient is asked not to eat or drink anything or to rinse his mouth till one hour and not to take any solid foods till 48 hours because of availability of varnish to the tooth surface. The number of applications are two in a year and the advantages of varnish are that they form a watertight or a water resistant layer on the tooth surface which is also chemically and thermally resistant. It is also has an anti caries effect and prevention of the tooth from any injury or insult. The varnish is retained on the tooth surface for n number of days. But the disadvantages may be it is very expensive that the material is quite costly, is not available in the markets easily and lot of patient cooperation is also required for the application. The mechanism of action of the varnish is that the sodium fluoride makes the fluoroapatite which is available slowly but consistently or continuously to the enamel surface. This will lead to the formation of calcium fluoride which will further lead to the product fluoroapatite which is a resistant to tooth decay and causes more resistance of the tooth surface to any either of the chemical, thermal or mechanical insult. It is found that the Durfurt has a higher caries resistant than that of floor protector. Although the floor protector, the material or the compound the elements which are present in enamel for the floor protector is higher. This is because silicon fluoride reacts with water of the enamel to form hydrofluoric acid which will make the enamel more permeable or diffusible for sodium fluoride or the fluoride element. So this also enhances the fluoride retention, penetration and availability to the enamel surface. But the incidence of caries have been reported to be more reduced by the means of Durfurt varnish. So for professionally applied fluorides, other materials were also discovered later on. 
For example, the amine fluoride which was discovered by Mulliman. He found that it, when applied to the surface of the tooth, make it more resistant due to the property of chemical various physical bonding. The physical bonding can be provided by the means of the organic element. So it is more potent introduction of dental caries. Another compound material which was discovered was stannous hexa fluorozirconate, which also found to reduce the caries incidence in various patients. Now coming over to the self-applied topical fluorides. The self-applied topical fluorides can further be divided into the fluoride dentrifices or the fluoridated mouth rinses, the fluoridated toothpicks and the fluoridated tablets or drops which are available and can be easily applied by the patients at their home. Now what is a fluoride dentifice? The dentifice means dense means tooth and the fricate means to rub. So basically a dentifice is rubbed on the tooth surface by the means of a brush for the availability of fluoride on the tooth surface. One of the most commonly used fluoride compound in dentifices are sodium monofluorophosphate, sodium fluoride, stannous fluoride and amine fluoride. But sodium monofluorophosphate is the compound which is used most commercially available dentrifices. Now, there is a particular composition for the dentrifice. It comprises of an abrasive which will rub the tooth surface and provide an abrasive effect or the cleansing effect, a mechanical cleansing effect to the tooth surface, a humectant which will retain the moisture of the dentrifice, a detergent which will cause an effervescent action or the detergent action for the impurities or the food particles or the plaque which is stick on to the tooth. The binding agent which will bind or keep all the components together. A flavoring agent which can either be peppermint, spearmint, strawberry etc. There are a number of flavors which are available in the market according to the preference of the users. Then a fluoride. Generally fluoride is 0.1% by weight. That is the toothpaste have 1000 ppm of fluoride. For children, it is 500 ppm of fluoride in the toothpaste. Even water content is present which is 20 to 30 percent by weight. So sodium fluoride was the first element which was used in fluoridated toothpaste. But it had a limited spectra of activity. Then came stannous fluoride which may cause staining of teeth and the taste was not much acceptable to the patients and the users. It can also cause staining of restorations and the composites. Then the sodium monofluorophosphate was the most commonly used material in the dentifices by commercial companies. The concentration was 0.76 to 1%. The abrasive which was used in the sodium monofluoride faced was the sodium metaphosphate. The sodium metaphosphate system led to the reduction of the caries incidence by 34%. But when the tooth placed and the tooth brushing was supervised in patient, these were the results which were found. So what was the mechanism of action of these dentrifices was the fluoride was ready, released. The fluoride released was replaced by the hydroxyl ions which are present in the enamel then further leading to the formation of fluoroapatite. The fluoroapatite also covalently bonded to the phosphate atom of the tooth surface either directly or by hydrolysis. So there are certain recommendations for the use of dentrifices according to the age. In 
Less than 4 years of patients of fluoridated toothpaste are generally not recommended. From 4 to 6 years, it is advised that the patient should brush at least once a time daily with a fluoridated toothpaste and once with a non-fluoridated toothpaste. Between 6 to 10 years of age, twice with a fluoridated toothpaste and one without the paste. And the patients who are 10 years of above, thrice brushing with fluoridated toothpaste is generally recommended. So coming over to the fluoride mouth rinses. They are a very simple, well acceptable, safe and inexpensive means of reduction of dental caries. Results have reported that 35% reduction of caries process have been by the use of fluoridated mouth rinses. For children, many fluoridated mouth rinses are available like Ketodent, Cherident, etc. and Listerine, Rexidine, Hexidine for the adults. The sodium fluoride mouth rinses are formulated with 0.2% by weight of fluoride or 900 ppm. This is recommended dose for a weekly use of the fluoridated mouth rinses and 0.05% for a daily use containing 225 parts per million of fluoride. The APF mouth rinse causes the caries reduction of 30% with 200 parts per million of fluoride and a weekly rinse may reduce the caries up to 27% with 3000 ppm of fluoride. So the mouth rinses are simple, inexpensive and easy to follow method of reduction of caries but it cannot be used in patients who are less than 2 years of age. Sodium fluoride mouth rinses can also be easily prepared in the house of the patient or the person who is using it. A 200 mg of tablet is dissolved in 20 ml of water and a solution is obtained which is adequate enough for rinsing of the family for a day. And it is very cost effective. It will just cost 1.25 rupees per month for the entire family. It is found to reduce the caries incidence by 30%. Similarly, the school, school mouth rinsing programs were executed at a mass level for the prevention of caries in school going children. So conclusively, I will say that the topical fluoride has been proved as an effective agent for anti-caries and it should be executed for implementation both at individual and community level. Thank you.